when we think of the refugee and the migrant communities, we think of labels, we think of nationalities that are not Malaysian. It's just the lack of awareness and the lack of education in our system that, that helps us not realise that, you know, refugees are amongst us. They, they work in our factories, you know, they build our buildings, they build our highways. They are so integrated in, in many ways, you know, in into our Malaysian community. They, I mean, like, I know people are not super happy when I say this, right? But in so much sense, they are our unsung heroes, right? And how do we acknowledge them as that? Um, this pandemic has really gotten me thinking, who are essential workers? The cleaners are essential workers. Um, the ones building buildings are essential workers. Um, the ones building highways are essential workers. They do so much, yet they're so unseen. I have been doing this for close to 10 years now. I think it breaks me realizing I am privileged. What am I doing? My privilege and privilege is something that we need to discuss, right? Privilege really just means having a shelter over my head, not not having to worry when my next meal is, um, not having even to think about you know whether can I go to school. Privilege looks like education. Being privileged means having a job. It then leads on to giving them a bit more dignity in that sense. Everything is just so connected to our well-being. So I guess that that psychological impact from being detained then trickles down to how they approach the communities around them, um, how they just them constantly living in fear, constantly being scared, just that, that struggle even more to submit within our communities. We saw a big spark. People started having the conversation about the refugee community all over Instagram of all places. But young people are engaging in conversation. And when the young people are engaged in conversation, that's where they can influence their parents, you know? So yes, we are ready. Even if signing the Refugee Convention Protocol is too big a step, right? How can we first start with the small, with just one sector like education, allowing them access to schools or jobs. How do we not make it illegal for them to work um, by allowing them to work in our pasaborongs, you know, our, um, our supermarkets, you know? How do we not threaten them with their safety when they work such jobs even? Um, there are many ways we can, we can compromise, we can, we can discuss, you know, what are they so-called allowed to do and what they're not allowed to do. But I don't think it needs to be a hard either or. What will come out of making the life of refugees better? It then leads on to them being able to contribute to our economy, to our ecosystem. It makes all the difference.